let's record so Hare Krishna Hare Krishna so uh, what is the symptom of an intelligent person one of the symptoms eh? any thoughts Um, this is someone who uses the human life to understand Krishna. Yeah, very true. So this human life is meant to actually understand oneself, understand this world, why there is there so much of suffering, and why there is so much of inequality. Who am I? And understand Krishna. Yeah, that's the ultimate application of one's intelligence. Any other thoughts? In general, need not be a very Krishna conscious oriented answer as such, or a reply as such. See, uh, again, through Prabhupada's audio tapes and all, his classes are amazing, his audio tapes, his writings and teachings. Uh, the sign of an intelligent person is one, who can translate who can translate who can convert the complicated into simple no. who can express who can translate uh, express the complicated into simple and this is what bhagavad gita will do honestly speaking this is what bhagavad gita will do Going through the teachings, the messages in Bhagavad Gita, what Krishna is sharing, what Krishna is giving us, offering us, the highest, ultimate, highest thing. And we all, to some extent, our life is complicated. And we ourselves have a role to play, the major role, I believe, in complicating our lives. My partner would come later, my son, my daughter, my parents, neighbors, office and all would come later. They also may be giving in some factor, but predominantly it is me. So Bhagavad Gita teaches us acknowledgement, teaches us responsibility, and it will surely help us unlock the mysteries of life. It will give us the, the right intelligence, how to convert our complicated life into simple. And simple doesn't mean naive. There's an English word, naive. What does naive mean? Evie, you would know, Ellen and others also would know. Naive, if I'm pronouncing it correct. Naive. Someone who's a beginner, Hi. amateur. Yes, yes. Yes, Ellen, naive. Were you saying something, Ellen? No, that was it. That was it. Naive. Yeah, sorry. All right. In Scotland, I believe more in Scotland, there's this expression uh, don't take what? Nah. Soft to be deaf. deaf. I, I cannot do it. I can, cannot do accents in general, and I cannot do Scottish accents, and I wouldn't dare or try as well. But uh, have you heard of this, Evie and, or Ellen mainly? In Scotland, they say, right, don't uh, don't take um, soft, soft to be deaf, something like that, they say. So as in, <laughs> uh, one could be a soft person, but that doesn't mean that he's, uh, he's naive or simple or that sort of thing. Again, in present day society, simple means that, okay, he's, he's like a bit kacha, he's a bit simple only, uh, but no. So Bhagavad Gita will give us the right intelligence to uh, this thing. Bhagavad Gita will give us the right intelligence how to convert our any complicated life into simple and make it more joyous. To share a bit of a background, Bhagavad Gita 18 chapters, huh? and this was spoken in the middle of a battlefield between two parties who were related to each other some blood relations as well some family relations as well uh, krishna was on one side 
supporting Arjuna. He was the chariot driver of Arjuna, his friend Arjuna, who comes from a royal family. Uh, and his brothers and Arjuna together they are called as Pandavas, the son of Pandus. And on the other side are Arjuna's cousins only, grandfathers and all, Kauravas, same family clan history. And the, there was this fight between the two, a massive, 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 huge fight, huge war actually. And as we read a bit, we'll see what brought about in this war, why. Okay, let's maybe discuss a bit. So text one, please. Dharma Chetre Kuru Chetre Samaveta Yuyutsava Mamaka Pandavas Cheva Kimakurva Tasanjaya. If you click on text one. Yeah. Uh, Evie, would you be okay to read translation? You mean the um, English bit? No, sorry. I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying English to figure out, and my phone's. Okay, we'll see. Uh, um, how do you say the name? Sorry. Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra said, O oh Sanjaya, after my sons and the sons of Pandu assembled in the place of pilgrimage at Kurukshetra. Uh, desiring to fight, what did they do? Hmm. So read the purport as well. Again, we won't be reading each and every purport. And wherever I feel like, I will ask you all to read purport. So if we read the first paragraph of the purport, please. Um, Bhagavad Gita is the widely read theistic science summarized in the Gita Mahat. Yeah, glorification of the Gita. There it says that one should read Bhagavad Gita very scrutinizingly with the help of a person who is a devotee of Sri Krishna and try to understand it without personally motivated interpretation. Did you say the first sentence or paragraph? The first paragraph, please. Okay, yeah. Uh, the example of clear understanding is there in the Bhagavad Gita itself in the way the teaching is understood by Arjuna, who heard the Gita directly from the Lord. If someone is fortunate enough to understand the Bhagavad Gita in that line of discipline, don't know what that word is, succession, without motivated yeah. interpretation, then he surpasses all studies of Vedic wisdom and all scriptures of the world. One will find in the Bhagavad Gita all that is contained in other scriptures, but the reader will also find things which are not to be found elsewhere. That is the specific standard of the Gita. It is the perfect theistic science because it is directly spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. Helen, mm -hmm. would you like to read the next paragraph? No uh, Hold it. And then read, please. Okay, yeah. Um, the topics discussed by Dhritarashtra. How do you say the name? Sorry, Prabhu. Dhritarashtra. The topics discussed by Dhritarashtra and Sanjaya, as described in the Mahabharata form the basic principle for this great philosophy. It is understood that this philosophy evolved on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, uh, which is a sacred place of pilgrimage from the immemorial, immemorial time of the Vedic age. It was spoken by the Lord when he was present personally on this planet for the guidance of mankind. Okay, Pratik, read next paragraph. The word Dharma Shetra, a place where religious rituals are performed, is significant because on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, the supreme personality of Godhead was present on the side of Arjuna. Dhritarashtra, the father of the Kurus, 
was highly doubtful about the possibility of his sons ultimately free. In his doubt, he inquired from his secretary, Sanjaya, what did they do? He was confident that both his sons and the sons of his younger brother Pandu were assembled in that field of Kurukshetra for a determined engagement of the war. Still, his inquiry is significant. He did not want a compromise between the cousins and brothers, and he wanted to be sure of the fate of his sons on the battlefield. Because the battle was arranged to be fought at Kurukshetra, which is mentioned elsewhere in the Vedas as a place of worship even for the denizens of heaven, Dhritarashtra came very fearfully about the influence of the holy place on the outcome of the battle. He knew very well that this would influence Arjuna and the sons of Pandu favorably. Because by nature they were all virtuous. Sanjaya was a student of Vyasa and therefore by the mercy of Vyasa, Sanjaya was able to envision the battlefield of Kurukshetra even while he was in the room of Dhritarashtra. And so Dhritarashtra asked him about the situation on the battlefield. Thank you. Abhishek, next paragraph. Both the Pandas and the sons of Dhritarashtra belong to the same family. But Dhritarashtra's mind is disclosed herein. He deliberately claimed only his sons as Guru, and he separated the sons of Pandu from the family heritage. One can thus understand the specific position of Dhritarashtra in his relationship with his nephews. The sons of Pandu, as in the Padi, feel the unnecessary plans are taken out. So it is accepted from the very beginning of these topics that in the religious field, the unnecessary, no, no, sorry, field of Kuru, Kurukshetra, where the father of religion, Sri Krishna, was present, the unwanted plans like Dhritarash, Sun, Duryodhan, and others would be wiped out and the, the thoroughly religious person. Headed by Yudhishthira, Yudhishthira would be established by the Lord. This is the significance of the word Dharma Shetra and Kurukshetra, apart from their historical and Vedic importance. I shall read translation. No, first verse translation, please. Dhritarashtra said, O oh Sanjay, after my sons and the sons of Pandu assembled in the place of pilgrimage at Kurukshetra, desiring to fight, what did they do? So, uh, Bhagavad Gita starts with a question, Dhritarashtra, the blind king, he's the king who is blind and he's asking this question. Huh? <laughs> Just on, a bit on a side note, it is always good to ask questions. Huh? It's always very nice to ask questions and some things in life should be cherished, which, which should be built up as an asset and should be valued and we should try to imbibe the such uh, say qualities in our life one of which is what asking question you should be asking question another is good observance good observance observing why good observance because we cannot afford to commit all the mistakes by ourselves now yeah? otherwise it will be very difficult if i'm not observing and learning from someone else's mistake if i'm not observing where is someone else going wrong and if i also do the same thing and all, it wouldn't really help. So good observing. Um, is there much noise coming from my background? Oh, 
okay so good observance hmm? and uh, asking questions uh, and observing watching seeing things these are very good quality and being a good listener being a good listener the world will benefit a lot when actually we speak less and listen more uh, when we go more into a uh, silent zone within ourselves then we will be more awakened uh, and see i mean by the a nature's arrangement if we check these two words silent and listen you know they carry exactly the same letters just written differently is it not like there's those games as well right mm, crossword or what game something where numbers arrangement is done and all letters arrangement and make a number make a, make a word so silent and listen they carry the same letters just return arranged a bit differently likewise how could we be a good listener and be more silent then we can embrace more peace in our life we can call for more peace in our life or receive more peace in our life also asking questions and later on the quality of our questions as well has to be seen Questions shouldn't be asked on the platform. Okay, where is food? Where is shelter? Where is money? Where is sense gratification and all? At the end, these are all kind of materially binding only. Questions should be to help us become spiritually awakened, to help us realize some sort of transcendence in our life, and then march on forward. so here the trust is asking this question dharma chetra kuru chetra na so in this field uh, um, my sons and the sons of pandu assembled in the place of pilgrimage at kuru chetra so kuru chetra being a place of pilgrimage desiring to fight what did they do so i'll just share one context from mahabharat uh, most of you would have heard it i like that context it, it's very valuable i find it good teaching out of it so just before the war before the war krishna he was in his palace in the place called dwarka he was in his palace and taking some rest and uh, arjuna and duryodhan so arjuna we know from um, bhagavad gita uh, the personality krishna's friend and duryodhan also he is also uh, related to arjuna his cousin and krishna as well he is related like that uh, comes from the royal family itself duryodhana but he is very envious he is very adamant very proud hmm? arjuna is a s- s- epitome of all morality and duryodhana is a epitome of all immoralities so these both brothers these cousins they approach krishna before the few days weeks before the war Uh, at krishna's palace in dwarka and uh, krishna seeing them first gives arjuna the opportunity to kind of ask what benediction do you want they both go with this intent that war is coming we have the day decided we have the place decided the venue decided and now we are traveling the whole world and we are seeking who is going to support us you know combining the armed forces and all who is going to take our sides or who is going to take the other side who is on our side or who is not on our side so we have come for the same with you krishna as well to check from you whose side are you going to take so uh, krishna then said okay to let you know i will be in the war i can be in the war but i wouldn't pick up arms i won't fight i won't pick up arms at all and on one side it is me who won't be fighting on another side is my army is my army full trained very nicely trained and everything uh, very well trained and they will fight surely so you make a choice either you can choose me but i wouldn't fight on otherwise my army is there and you can choose my army and they will be happy to fight so first he ask arjuna what would you like to choose my krishna is saying would you like to choose me or my army and arjuna for him it was a no brainer 
no thoughts required no no calculation to do he without any hesitation instantly spontaneously he said instantly then and there that krishna of course i choose you obviously i will choose you i choose you please be on my side and uh, duryodhan then he was left with the other option of going with the army so duryodhan actually wanted the army only he didn't want krishna so duryodhan said okay fine uh, because arjun has chosen you so i am left with the army so i will go with the army uh, you let your commander in chief contact my commander in chief and we will sort out the logistics the arrangement when they come and i will fill in them with all the details and duryodhan left he left the place he went then and krishna asked arjuna that why did you choose me what made you choose me uh, uh, i am not going to fight at all not going to fight but uh, this is where uh, arjuna he showed his faith he showed his faith he showed his attachment towards krishna he said doesn't matter we know you are not going to fight um, i wouldn't want you to fight as well but as long as you are there in the war in front of me and kindly could you be my chariot driver i would like you to drive my chariot uh, if you could kindly drive my chariot and help me in the war that is all i need that is all i want if you could be in my chariot and driving my chariot and then i would have no problems likewise in our life many a times we come across situations huh? or oh, people say more in britain and could be in other parts of the world as well uh, oh i am in a situation i am in a situation or oh, situation has taken place a situation has taken place hmm? so we, in our lives as well we come across situations you know sthiti aisi aati hai situations and uh to let you all of you know actually um i will go like maybe 50 50 hindi and english or uh, whatever percentage huh, in both hindi and english everything is like a bit mixed up nowadays and uh, so i will speak try to speak in both languages hindi and english and kindly tolerate please uh, but the beauty is bhagavad gita is not at all mixed up bhagavad gita is pure and it's completely unadulterated as it is and whichever language whatever helps us connect us and language is what essentially it is helping a means to express ourselves to connect ourselves to explain and communicate and understand things so in our lives as well we come across situations wherein we have to take a decision choose and choose what choose krishna or krishna's material energy you know as in maya yeah you know? definitely while we were in school college uni work life family life whichever life wherever we are traveling whatever we are doing in any phase of our life there will come situations wherein we will have to choose choose between again what krishna or maya you know choose between these two so uh th- such will always come choose between krishna or temptations yeah. are we getting tempted or choose a bit making a choice between morality and immorality yeah. making a choice between kindness or a bit brutality so th- that will become making a choice between self sacrifice like say huh? selfless activity giving ourselves selflessly for a higher purpose higher aim higher goal or do we indulge ourselves in sense gratification arjuna also had this choice right he could have easily chosen the army of krishna say no but he went towards krishna and he said krishna look this is the message in bhagavad gita what did arjuna say krishna kindly come on my side uh, krishna kindly be on my side now god is on everyone's side he is on the side of the thief as well he is on the side of a um, uh, a, a gentle person as well prabhupada mentions in his some audio classes the tape 
a thief goes to a temple and he prays in the evening he goes to the temple and he prays to krishna oh krishna i'm going to make a uh, steal uh, make a crime a burglary in in that particular house uh, why because i have this inside information i know the family is going outside for two nights so tonight only i want to strike and i want to make this burglary so kindly help me kindly let it happen and the person whose house who is locking his house and all and going away he has also come to temple and praying what oh krishna i am going out for two nights hmm? i'm going out for two nights i have locked everything but please kindly look after the house so that no burglary happens what to do <laughs> krishna has to satisfy both huh? someone is praying to krishna kindly help me so that i can do this burglary and kindly help protect the house so anyways krishna is all perfect he can do all the arrangements and all only krishna has the potential to satisfy each and every one to the core of one's uh, heart say none other than krishna so arjuna say told krishna that kindly come on my side please could you be on my side likewise the whole life we have to mold ourselves we have to check ourselves that are we calling krishna are we calling morality on our side or not are we governed or living by some ethics principles values or not god is on everyone's side but question is are we on god's side god is on everyone's side no krishna is helping everyone purify getting purified helping everyone getting frustrated through their material desires lower desires and all who is not krishna helping krishna is helping a plant to become a tree everywhere it's more on our side so like arjuna said no i don't want your material energy your glaring energy maya no i do not want temptations in life i would want you kindly come on my side and this is the through the study of bhagavad gita we will come across again situations in our life wherein we could we should be able to see a clear contrast is this the call of krishna or call of maya is it taking me to krishna or is it taking me to maya uh, separating me from krishna or separating me from my inner nature or my core nature my real nature is this something which is a give me peace very short lived short term and then bind me or is it something which will free me up so if we have this thing in our mind always in our focus at the front of our whatever we are engaged into then it will settle down a lot of things give us the right clarity inspiration to take the right decision and life should always be molded in a way that we are on the way to krishna on the way to krishna then only we can say we are genuinely living any question or comment in the meantime uh, just quickly she did, 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 did arjuna know that krishna was the supreme personality of godhead when he made that choice beautiful question thank you well he knew as well and he didn't know as well cause he knew it through cause krishna was special they all knew okay pandavas knew certainly krishna is special special and how they knew because through the uh, pandavas na they they were versed in scriptures they had read scriptures as well they traveled as well you know they took an association of saintly people and all so saintly people everyone knew yeah in the saintly community and scriptures that he he is the one the supreme personality of god as the source of all emanation creation and the absolute truth and absolute reality the supreme controller the independent authority so arjuna was aware and at the same time he wasn't aware as well why because he was in so much of love friendship attachment towards krishna that that attachment love friendship overpowered or took over even that belief or that knowing that krishna is god that was the thing for them god was like okay god is narayan or okay but they were so absorbed or immersed in in their love towards krishna that they didn't even 
even though they knew, yet they didn't know. That is the thing. Like same, same, same exam. In a way, say someone who, who is the grandson of a prime minister, say whose grandfather is a prime minister, say one's grandfather could be a, the prime minister of one's country. So the grandson knows as well while he's growing up. Grandson meaning someone who is in the age of four, five, six. Huh? At that time, generally speaking, a child doesn't know much about politics, prime minister, this and that. But he can sense. Can he not? He can sense, oh, wow, my granddad must be a big shot. Why? Oh, I see so many um, um, this protection, this and that. And wherever he goes, people are pulling chair for him, doing this and that. So my granddad, he can vibe, he can sense it. He, he perhaps knows, but struggles to maybe explain. And that is never in his forefront. The biggest thing is what? Oh, there comes my granddad. Granddad, come, become a horse. Play with me, granddad. Come, dear granddad, let's go play football. So that is always overtaken by the... Uh, and the thing that knowing that my granddad is a big shot, that really doesn't impress the grandson. He's more enamored by understanding, yes, my granddad, he's my granddad and I play with him. Uh, I can you know, uh, sit on his back. I can ask him to become my horse. Can anyone else say? No, <laughs> no one else can say that. Uh, imagine a prime minister and can anyone else say become my horse? No, but a grandson can easily say. A grandson can easily steal food from prime minister. A grandson can easily give food. A grandson can be just like a grandson, right? So similarly, Arjuna knew as well, just like a grandchild, grandson knows as well. He had that emotion, he had that sense. But at the same time, you know, seeing the lotus face of Krishna, one will forget everything actually. You know, when one sees the lotus face of Krishna and Arjuna, he was completely in love with Krishna, that bonding, that friendship, that attachment. A grandson also, no? he doesn't see, he's like, there's a unique relationship between a grandchild and a grandparent, right? That sort of thing. Does that answer your question, Alan? It does, beautifully, thank you. All right, very nice. Yeah, Alan and myself and some other devotees in Corona Bhavan, we had an amazing evening, one evening, yeah. One of the memorable evenings in Karuna Bhavan, I would say. So, with that thing, that uh, choice, definitely we'll have to make choice, uh, decisions, even if we become a devotee or not yet practicing. There's no escapism. But it's how do we get the courage, the inspiration. So in Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna was refusing to fight. And he was quoting some reasons. And his reasons was not that he had forgotten how to fight. No, he was struggling with inspiration. That was his reason. And what did Krishna do? He did not change Arjuna's skill set or did not help him develop any new skills. Rather, he gave him willingness, the will, will to fight, the motivation, the right purpose. Likewise, in our lives as well, doing jobs, doing, looking after a house, travel, whatever we are doing. We know many times this is the right thing, I should do it and all, but we struggle with purpose. We struggle with inspiration, motivation. And many times we struggle to differentiate between right and wrong. And teachings, study of Bhagavad Gita will help us give that inspiration. Skill set wise, we could still be fine. No. Skill set meaning externally, our body wise. Well, a human form of life, what more is required? Two good legs, you know, and two hands, one mouth to speak and all. This is, this is just a material vehicle to enter into transcendence. And we all have. Don't think so. Any one of us, at least in this group, is physically disabled. Huh? Anyone in this group is somewhat like very much uh, disturbed or in that sense. So we all are. We all have that potential and everything required to embark, to take on in life. So coming to this shloka now with this, throughout in Bhagavad Gita, if we can keep hold of this um, event, 
when arjuna and duryodhan both brothers cousins they go to krishna and one chooses krishna and another is happily choosing maya happily choosing maya and look god will never impose upon himself to us krishna will never impose krishna could have told na well arjuna you take me and duryodhan for you i give then my, um, my army no god will never impose likewise god is not imposing maya also upon us it is us living entity who adopts maya it is us only just like we see worldwide in in city center markets street shops and all na fashion shops and all what i don't know the name or i forgot forget the name you know the statue name where a lady or a man is like a statue is there and dress is put upon that statue there's a particular name for it if anyone knows then please say mannequin say again mannequin mannequin okay i think okay so say mannequin and a dress is put upon the mannequin and what does the shop do like some shops we may be knowing names in india some different shops here some different shops but whatever uh in the window there would be transparent glass mirror and one can see walking outside a mannequin is put man mannequin and woman mannequin if at all like that and dressed up and nothing just the mannequin is doing and tempting just like look at this dress look i'm fresh i'm new arrival i'm on discount i'm on sale just that much that much to attract our attention right we may not be wanting to go to that shop we may be wanting to do, go to a grocery shop get some bread some vegetables and stuff but we just get attracted by that mannequin who is just there look at me look this is new arrival this is the latest fashion and what not and all i'm on sale i'm on discount hmm? and then we may not go to grocery shop and we enter into that um, cloth store shop and buy that so this is why bhagavad gita teaches us how to take more responsibility in life how to be more acknowledging ourselves our goods and bads both and how to uh, grow up from there elevate ourselves from there so krishna never imposes maya upon us neither krishna imposes himself also upon us no only choices are given options are given choices arjuna chose krishna duryodhan chose maya living entity chooses either krishna or maya us only and it is through this wisdom of bhagavad gita through this knowledge and awareness of bhagavad gita we will find the courage the conviction that to say yes to the right thing and say no to the no thing so now coming into the translation into the shloka hmm? uh, the king dhritarashtra is the father of duryodhan another beauty of bhagavad gita is we need not know the entire background the entire context of the war it is good to know certainly those who know it is good to know and once we go through in the study of bhagavad gita later on if some someone wants to know studies or get some more background it is quite helpful but it is not at all essential it is not at all necessary na bhag mahabharat has 100000 text in it 100000 shlokas hmm? it's a huge huge thing so 100000 shlokas and we will get lost or we wouldn't find real transcendence the real cream is Bha- bhagavad gita 700 only 700 text and all the essence is given and krishna doesn't want us na that see in in worldly things in job you have to be like graduate or a different things called in india different in uk but we all understand you have to be studying at a certain level pass this pass that have you got this certification that certification this experience then only you can apply leave alone getting the job apply for it hmm? uh, in uh, and likewise in other things there is always a prerequisite anything if you go for some council work have you do you have this paper we need that paper this thing and that thing but such is not the requirement bhagavad bhagavad gita krishna is never saying bhagavad gita is never saying like oh have you studied mahabharat do you know mahabharat by the way 
do you know this thing do you know that thing what had happened or all doesn't matter doesn't matter if someone knows again good enough but it is not at all essential because krishna understands life is too short we are on anyways we are so complicated and we are so distracted so there's no point in adding further more distraction just read bhagavad gita understand it we'll find inspiration to apply it in our lives and uh, enter into transcendence so the blind king the duryodhan's father is blind physically and spiritually as well for now at least so the blind king asks sanjay sanjay is his secretary because he's blind and sanjay his secretary can see everything going on in the battlefield from a huge distance he was blessed sanjay was blessed by his spiritual master vyasdev so sanjay is living with the king in his uh, uh, royal chamber which is in hastinapur sanjay is living there with the king in his royal room say huh? in one of the meetings rooms or somewhere and from there sanjay could physically see actually what is happening in kurukshetra which is a good few thousand miles some good thousand miles whatever from hastinapur but he had been blessed sanjay had this capacity to actually see and he was relating everything to the king he said i will relate everything to you and king also chose him because he sanjay was his minister uh, some civil servant and was his friend as well so king said yes please you relay everything to me because i am blind i cannot see but you let me know the live commentary of what is going on this war so he asked sanjay after my sons and the sons of pandu assembled in the place of pilgrimage at kurukshetra desiring to fight what did they do and see when we speak when we say something many a times many times especially in times of crisis especially in tough times or a bit shaky times it reveals our inner emotion our inner character our inner mood our inner personality likewise in this text we can see the personality somewhat of dhritarashtra a few points first of all uh, what is the need of asking desiring to fight what did they do baba both the teams both the parties have assembled there you know from all over the world warrior soldiers and everyone have come so such a huge big army is it 64 million or something i don't remember in terms of this um, system of counting in indian system of counting it's 64 crore you can see whatever 640 million i believe uh, but it was a huge number of soldiers who got killed actually in this war hmm? so such a huge number of soldiers army being assembled the logistics see if army is there just the army won't be there right some food canteen has to be set up to feed this army huh? there was food canteen something set up there was medical camp as well for lo- uh, and other logistics were the medical and all so such huge army assembled there everything desiring to fight they will fight only na they will fight only but the emotion of dhritarashtra is well desiring to fight i hope they are going to fight i hope they fight why because some more things see in duryodhan side the army's head count was something as 11 akshani sena one one akshani could be imagine 1 million hmm? so duryodhan had a head count of soldiers and everyone included 11 million and pandava side they had only 7 million say 7 akshani sena again one akshani if it is 1 million then say 7 million and dhritarashtra was under this calculation well on head count we have more warrior soldiers and all talent wise skill wise experience wise and ammunitions everything wise we we are we are on the higher side we have more so we should be winning it so he wanted this war to actually happen he wanted that okay once for all this pandavas this five brothers they get out of my sight who are his who are his nephew only his direct nephew this pandavas they are his direct nephew blind king's direct nephew but he doesn't want to see them he's caring so much of 
enmity, envy, hatred towards them. And he's so self-centered, so self-absorbed, so heavily attached to his son, to himself, to his position, that he doesn't want those five brothers to live. And they die once for all so that he can peacefully and relish and enjoy everything. So he's asking, my sons and the sons of Pandu. So see, in Vedic culture, there's not this concept of my and yours. Uh, generally speaking, in a society, civilized society and all, there's not that concept of um, my, this is mine and that is yours and all like that. No, like uh, Diksha, she's my cousin. But in generally, when we say and all, okay, who is she? She's sister and who is he? His brother. If depending further on the discussion, the topic, the subject matter, one may say, well, she's my mother's uh, sister's daughter. This is how we are related and all. Hmm? But generally, brother, sister, that sort of thing. But here he is create, clearly separating my sons and the sons of Pandu. Clearly, he's dividing the two parties. Previously, they were all one family only. But now, my sons and the sons of Pandu. So when one speaks, the emotions can be read. Again, if it's a bit of a tough situation, tight spot, the one one speaks, now, how one speaks, the inner emotions, they all come out. So that is one thing. Then assembled in the place of pilgrimage. Now he was worrying the blind king. What is the reason to ask otherwise? Now, if after all these months of preparation and all assembled, they will fight only. But why? He's worried. What? They're assembled at this place of pilgrimage, Kurukshetra, Tirthstana, Tirthstana, na? holy place. So they've assembled here. And um, does this holy place influence the mind of my son? Hmm? Does this holy place influences the mind of my son in such a way that he wants to make a peace with the Pandavas? He doesn't want war, war now. So the king is worried. What if my son see if getting influenced by this holy place? Then what if he wants to have a peace contract with the Pandavas and no war and give them some land and let them fight and let them live? If he does that, the king will be upset. So he's a bit worried. Also, he's worried uh, the holy place will be on the side of the Pandavas because the Pandavas are righteous, they are moral. And the Kauravas, the king's sons, they are all immoral, all ir ir unrighteous. So he's worried. Place, the place we live in influences our consciousness tremendously. It will influence our consciousness. Yeah. This is why like city life has a different buzz, energy. Uh, village life, town life has a different buzz, buzz different energy and all. Uh, even in the house as well, say bathroom has a different energy. Uh, living room has a different energy. Kitchen has a different energy. Worship room has a different energy altogether in the house. Puja ganna. So the king is wondering, again, I will try to do both Hindi and English and kindly tolerate, please. So, Stan ka kitna bada influence hota hai? Amari chetna mein na? Samay, samay bhi bhot influence karti hai amari chetna ko. Sanskar, swabhav, ye sab amari chetna ko bhot influence karti hai. So, Dhritarashtra, he is very worried because Place influences our consciousness. Time influences our consciousness. A time of the day, evening time, night time, evening time, if you go in city center in, in say, UK, it's a different mood altogether. Morning time, it's a different mood altogether. The time of the day influences our consciousness. Place influences our, heavily influences our consciousness. Then our impressions which we are carrying in our minds from previous lives some scars, they certainly influence our consciousness. Then our nature, our own created nature influences our consciousness. And all this influences our service attitude. 
our engagement attitude in this life everything so the king is worried if in a holy place what if my son wants to have a treaty a pact with them or will this holy place favor the righteous person that is his worry kurukshetra and desiring to fight what did they do they will fight only na and why this war is needed it says in the purport right anyone doing gardening like ev ln they do some gardening work in karuna bhavan in krishna eco farm community in scotland so anyone doing some farming gardening would know you plant seeds but alongside there will be unwanted plants called weeds unwanted things keep on growing will grow and they are such they look very much real they look very much good they look very much as if they are the right plants and all and it's sometimes very difficult to take them out as well sometimes quite misleading so likewise in our lives as well we we try to put in the right seed let the right good plant grow but simultaneously same time there's so much of wrong things also we are putting or naturally or unnaturally by the force of our samskars predominantly come and take place in our heart you know we want to be kind and at the same time greed is also coming we want to be compassionate moral but at the same time so much of pride is also there so krishna wanted this war why he he assembled assembled all the kings of this world all the leaders and all pious impious and all and at the in one ground in one at one point in time settled scores nicely so that the ball can be set rolling and there could be religion nicely established likewise continuing in our lives as well we should check um, what sort of seed am i planting in my heart what sort of seed am i watering in my heart how much weeds unwanted plants is am i carrying in my heart and chop them chop them chop them chop them cut them from the roots all together so this is the arrangement purpose of this war to chop the unwanted desires unwanted personalities unwanted elements from society so that there can be more peace stability and set, um, uh, setting the ball actually say for religion to be nicely established and practiced further on okay any question or comment or anyone if would like to say or add anything so this is krishna's plans how to protect the pious and punish the miscreant say likewise in our lives as well we have to see what good and bad we are carrying and how can we protect the good how can we protect the good and how can we free ourselves from any negative influence and as we study bhagavad gita further we'll understand what is actually good what is actually to be protected and what is actually harmful to be avoided or completely taken out from the roots ओके लेट्स मूव टू नेक्स्ट ट्रांसलेशन नाउ हर्षा अब केवल ट्रांसलेशन ही दिखाओ चैप्टर में आओ फिर ट्रांसलेशन ही पढ़ते हैं और जहाँ पे भी तात्पर्य देखना होगा वहाँ पे बोलेंगे सो नाउ लेट्स रीड जस्ट सम ट्रांसलेशन है सो लेट्स रीड इन दिस ऑर्डर नाउ है हर्षा यू रीड सेकेंड एल एन थर्ड प्रतीक फोर्थ देन ईवी दीक्षा देन अभिषेक है Sanjaya said, "O king, after looking over the army arranged in military formation by the sons of Pandu, King Duryodhana went to his teacher and spoke the following words: Ellen." O oh, my teacher behold the great army of the sons of pandu so expertly arranged by your intelligent disciple the son of 
Drupada. Pratik? Here in this army are big bowmen equal in fighting to me. Eight fighters like Yuyudhana, Virata, and Drupada. Evie, please read. There are also great heroic, powerful fighters like Dr Drakatu, sorry, um, che Chekitana, Kasiraja, Purujit, Kunti Borja, and Saibia. Very nice. <laughs> Big step for you. They are the mighty Yupanyu, the very powerful Uttamata, the son of uh, Subhadra and the sons of All these warriors are great champions. Okay, Abhishek, read. But for your information, O oh best of the Brahmans, let me tell you about the captains who are especially qualified to lead my military forces. Hmm. So this is Duryodhan speaking, the king's son, no? the blind king's son. <clears throat> and he is also full of cheat, deceit, duplicity, pride, arrogance, full of such qualities. That's his personality. So Sanjay is giving that commentary. O oh, king, after looking over the army, arranged in military formation, the sons of Pandu, um, by the sons of Pandu, King Duryodhan went to his teacher and spoke the following words. So this, he's speaking to his military teacher. And look how diplomatically he is talking and saying that uh, he's trying to kind of uh, taunt, he's trying to trigger, he's trying to ridicule a bit his military teacher. He's by saying that, look, the how the our opponents have arranged their army so expertly, by whom their commander in chief, hmm? uh, the son of Drupad, Drishta Dumnya. And he's trying to make the military teacher remember that this particular commander in chief uh, on Pandava side who have arranged this army, you had an opportunity in the past to kill him actually. You had an opportunity, but you did not uh, heed to that opportunity. And you were so foolish, you, you, you yourself allowed him to take this military training. Why did you give him the military training? Because the military teacher, uh, Dronacharya, had trained Drishta Dumnya, who is now expertly arranged this army. So you knew that um, if in future he will be coming against us only. And the teacher knew that in future he is going to kill me or he is going to be the cause of my death. But yet you gave him that training. Why? So now he is kind of rebuking, indirectly chastising him for your mistake in the past. Now we are here at this position. And uh, they are now he's counting who all are the great personalities on the side of Arjuna. So there are persons like Bhima, Arjuna, uh, and you, Dana, Drupada, others and all. And he's counting all these names. Huh? There are other mighty personalities, the very powerful Uttamoja, and all such personalities he's counting. And like I like asking this question. So maybe Ellen, Evie, Pratik, uh, Abhishek, Aap log bataiye. Baki sab se to maine pooch rakha hai. Aap log batao ye Duryodhan naam le raha hai na? Itne saaro ka naam bataya. Aur abhi aage ab ye apne party mein koi kon kon hai? Uske naam batayega. Abhi tak isne Arjun ki party mein kon kon hai? Uska naam bataya. और अब आगे ये बताएगा कि हमारे पार्टी में भी कौन कौन है कौरवास के साइड में तो अर्जुन के पार्टी में जिनका नाम बताया है उनमें से ये किसी का नाम भूल रहा है किसको नाम किसको नाम नहीं ले रहा है किसका नाम नहीं बताया सो एल एन ईवी सो फार दुर्योधना हैज कॉल्ड आउट सम नेम्स एंड द नेम्स ही हैज कॉल्ड आउट 
is all from the sides of arjuna pandava side and going further he will call out names of personalities engaged in the war from his side but for now he has called out the names of personalities from arjuna's pandava side only and can you tell he is missing out some name some he is missing out calling some personality or identifying some personality if at all if you can see in spot krishna no mm you don't sound so convincing <laughs> प्रतीक अभिषेक आप लोग को प्रश्न समझ में आया क्या वैसे तो थोड़ा कंफ्यूज हूँ कि आप किसकी टीम की तरफ से मतलब सोच रहे हैं कि दुर्योधन अर्जुन की टीम के तरफ से पांडवास की टीम के तरफ से नाम पुकारा ना तो पांडवास की टीम में किन्हीं का नाम नहीं पुकारा है बताओ किसका नहीं पुकारा अभी तक आज के सेशन में तो बस उनके पांच भाई थे युधिष्ठर भीम अर्जुन नकुल सहदेव देर मोर मैनी लाइक द्रुपद so whom is he missing he is actually missing calling out someone's name on the pandava side okay harsha ab batao abhishek you were saying something ha huh? uh, i think uh, shikhandi okay okay ha uh, shikhandi ka naam liya to nahi बट शिखंडी था पांडवास के साइड में हर्षा कृष्णा जी का नाम नहीं लिया कृष्णा एलन यू वेर करेक्ट कृष्णा है ना द प्रोमिनेंट पर्सनालिटीज इज कॉलिंग आउट द नेम्स एंड ऑल ऑल दिस प्रोमिनेंट पर्सनालिटीज बट इज सच अफ्ट ऑफ पर्सन ना यू कैन सी अर्जुना बट यू कैनॉट सी कृष्णा इज नॉट सी कृष्णा He is calling out each and everyone's names, but not calling out Krishna. Why? Because he doesn't consider Krishna. He doesn't count Krishna to be like a warrior. He thinks Krishna is like a uh, cowherd boy. No, Gwal Gwalai samastha usko, Bhagwan ko na. And he doesn't count Krishna. But that's his stupidity. That's his stupidity. Like when in the peace process also, once Krishna went to the king's uh, palace. the koravas their palace and he urged the king that settle down the case give these five brothers five villages and settle down the case but duryodhana he was so adamant he said i wouldn't even spare the space as taken by the eye of a needle or the tip of a needle kitna jagah lete hai sui ki nok thodi jagah chahiye hoti hai usko but utna bhi wo dene ko taiyar nahi hai and then in that session in that meeting in that day what does duryodhana tell he tells his soldiers that capture this uh, krishna uh, capture this gwalwal ko capture them krishna and put him behind the bars and they, the soldiers stupidly go and capture krishna as well and krishna gives a bit of a universal form show to him and then krishna leaves itna mein ek samajhdar aadmi ko samajh jana chahiye na ki bhai kaun hai kiske paale le raha hu main but he he doesn't call krishna's name and this is also the arrangement of yog maya yog maya does not want duryodhan to call out krishna's name because if he considers krishna is present there and he calls out that be careful we have to be careful from krishna because he is also present there that would mean our duryodhan some pious credit will rise up there will be some more piety for him hai na bhagwan ka naam le raha hai भगवान को कंसीडर कर रहा है कि हाँ भाई ये भी है यहाँ पे भी कृष्ण को कंसीडर कर रहा है ऑल दो ही डजेंट अंडरस्टैंड कृष्ण इज द 
original supreme personality of godhead but still without his knowledge as well still if he's telling oh krishna is here be careful to uska bhi kuch na kuch pious credit milega na usko बट uh, क्या करें योग माया भाई आपका पाप का घड़ा इतना भर गया ना तो इसको अब खत्म ही करो इसको खत्म ही करो और सो मेनी चांसेस दुर्योधन वॉज गिवन टू रिफॉर्म हिमसेल्फ वॉज गिवन सो मेनी चांसेस सिंस बर्थ टू रिफॉर्म हिमसेल्फ रिफॉर्म हिम बट ही वॉज एंड विलिंग टू सो दिस इज वाई वार दिस इज वाई वार otherwise had he reformed little bit yogmaya still would have given him chance now as well okay from now on duryodhana will call out some personalities who are on his side so this is tactically diplomacy he's first telling his military teacher look how the army is arranged and look him look him look him look him so that he wants his military teacher to be very to boil up the blood of his military teacher to fight very seriously and strongly and not just get away in emotion and all so he's telling who all are there to be very careful and at the same time to keep up the moral of the military teacher so that he doesn't feel very depressed also or something he's trying to say look on our side as well we have very powerful persons so is it from yeah text 8 na so anuradha you read and then harsha and everyone in that order please anuradha pad paoge okay text 8 ha ji there are personalities like you bishma karna kripa ashwatthama bikarna and the son of somdath call purishrava who are always victorious in battle there are many other heroes who are prepared to lay down their lives for my sake all of them are well equipped with different kind of weapons and all are experienced in military science alan please read our strength is immeasurable and we are perfectly protected by grandfather bishma whereas the strength of the pandavas carefully protected by bima is limited all of you must now give full support to grandfather bishma as you stand at your respective strategic points of entrance into the phalanx of the army ev then bishma the great valiant grandson of the kuru dynasty the grandfather of the fighters blew his conch shell very loudly making a sound like the roar of a lion giving duryodhana joy after the conch shell sounds buckles trumpet and horns were all suddenly sounded and the combined sound was tremendous अभिषेक पढ़िए अभिषेक थोड़ी देर चाहे ना तो पढ़ रहे हो तो आपकी आवाज नहीं आ रही है वैसे हाँ ओके अभिषेक सुन पा रहे हो आप हमें अभी कुछ नहीं 
don't think so we are able to hear him evie please read 14 as well on the other side both lord krishna and arjuna stationed on a great chariot drawn by white horses sounded their transcendental conch shells yes so we slightly discuss a bit until here so Duryodhana again now he is approaching the grandfather Bhishma another these two are very key personalities the military teacher Dur Duronacharya and Bhishma the grandfather Bhishma so now he is approaching grandfather Bhishma or rather he is approached grandfather Bhishma and he's telling their personalities like you He's telling this to the teacher, military teacher, Dronacharya, you, Bhishma, Karna, Ashwadhamma, and all these personalities are in our side. And these personalities have, had never seen defeat, had never seen defeat in their lives. Yeah. But what to do? Then Krishna said, okay, you have never tasted defeat. Let me have you taste defeat as well. Yeah. The taste of defeat before you leave your body, you may taste defeat as well and see how defeat also feels. Yeah many things happen in life for the first time so let me have you taste defeat as well otherwise they had never defeated seen defeat in in their lives then he's saying like um others who are prepared to give their lives for my sake and surely they will give their lives as well uh, and our strength is immeasurable uh, something like um, immeasurable and uh, is perfectly protected by bhishma now here he calls bhishma hmm? and look look at sort of 10 and 11 huh? text 10 and 11 the sort of diplomacy say in 10 our strength is immeasurable and our we are perfectly protected by the grandfather where is the strength of the pandavas is limited carefully protected but limited hmm? So if someone's strength is immeasurable and very nicely, care, perfectly protected by Bhishma, then Bhishma doesn't need any protection. But in text 11, what is he saying? All of you must now give full support to Bhishma as you stand huh? at your respective strategic points of entrance. So in one way, he's raising his uh, like, He's trying to increase the ego of Bhishma by saying, oh, you are our savior, you are protecting us, your strength is immeasurable. But at the same time, he doesn't want to upset other warriors, other kings there. Because then others may feel, oh, what if everything he's telling to Bhishma, who, wh what are we doing here and all? Are we not good enough? And also, Bhishma is getting old as well. Hmm? Physically, materially speaking, he is the oldest person in the war the oldest person so also Duryodhana is thinking well he's so old now grandfather is getting really very old so is he any good or for war and all so he's trying to console or say others calm them down by saying please give protection to Bhishma because he's getting old he's not saying directly that he's getting old but because Bhishma is getting old give protection to him and you are good enough to protect Bhishma. So on all sides, he's trying to please everyone, but by diplomacy and flattery. And in human form of life, we cannot please each and one and everyone. It's stupidity to try to please each and everyone. No, we cannot. And certainly we cannot please people by duplicity or um, flattery and all. We have to bring genuineness in our life. Genuineness. Okay, Harsha, text 14, khalo, uska tat par ye bhi padhte hain. Mein khal se text 14 nahi hai. Okay. Uspe click karo ke khul jai ga hum. Evi, read the translation and purport as well, please. Fourteen, yeah. Sorry. Yes, please. Didn't have it up um, on it... my browser. Here we go. Yeah, it's... Okay. <clears throat> uh, on the other side, 
uh, both Lord Krishna and Arjuna, stationed on a great chariot drawn by white horses, sounded their transcendental conch shells. In contrast with the conch shell blown by Bhishmadeva, the conch shells in the hands of Krishna and Arjuna are described as transcendental. The sounding of the transcendental conch shells indicated that there was no hope of victory for the other side because Krishna was on the side of the Pandavas. Jayas tu pandu putranam yiksam pakse jana dana. Victory is always with persons like the sons of Pandu, because Lord Krishna is associated with them. And whenever repeat and wherever- Repeat the sentence again, please. Sorry? Repeat that sentence maybe two more times. Victory is always. Oh, victory is always with persons like the sons of Pandu, because Lord Krishna is associated with them. And whenever and wherever the Lord is present, the goddess of fortune is also there because the goddess of fortune never lives alone without her husband. Therefore, victory and fortune were awaiting Arjuna as indicated by the transcendental sound produced by the conch shell of Vishnu or Lord Krishna. Besides that, the chariot on which both the friends were seated had been donated by Agni, the fire god, to Arjuna. And this indicated that this chariot was capable of conquering all sides wherever it was drawn over the three worlds. Translation once again, please. Uh, on the other side, both Lord Krishna and Arjuna stationed on a great chariot drawn by white horses sounded their transcendental conch shells. Diksha, vapas se translations mein jau, ha? Oh, sorry, Diksha, bol no, Harsha. To, dekhi, ha. Ab, gyarwa, barwa, kya bol raha hai? Barwa, jise. So, in 12, 13, it is the first, the, the Duryodhana side, the Kauravas, the other party, they blow their conch shell. And, the grandfather blows his conch shell. He begins blowing his conch shell. Text 12, we can read. Uh, then Bhishma, the great valiant grandsire, the grandfather, um, uh, blew his conch shell very loudly, making a sound like the roar of a lion, giving Duryodhana joy. Duryodhana was very pleased when he heard his grandfather blowing conch shell. He, he felt very confident. Yes, we'll win and all. But uh, Bhishma, the grandfather blew the conch shell not to give Duryodhana joy. Rather, he was blowing out of his expression of so much of love that, yes, now the time has come. I had been waiting for my life. What time? I will get to see Krishna daily for good five, six, seven, eight, nine hours hmm, face to face in this war. And I can fight, have a fight with Krishna. And I can give him that satisfaction and joy in a fighting spirit imagine wrestler a wrestler will find so much of joy satisfaction when someone is giving him a good fight and a good wrestling fight a chess player he finds such a good satisfaction and joy when someone is really making him exercise his brain fully so bhishma pitama he was he is a pure devotee of krishna he was acting, he was taking this opportunity. Now the time has come where I can fight so valiantly. I will bring the best arrows and the best talent, whatever skill I've got, 100% or more beyond. Why? Because that will give Krishna joy. You know, a wrestler, imagine a wrestler going to a wrestler and not fighting nicely. Will the wrestler enjoy it? No. Imagine going to a chess player and making silly moves. Will the chess player enjoy it? No. Likewise, going to Krishna and in this war, Krishna is having this rasa, this mellow ras, rasa, you know, ras of a fighting. Hmm, maybe Ellen, you can explain later on to Evie what rasa means. So, Krishna is in this um, uh, battlefield, enjoying rasa, na, fighting rasa or Bhishma Pitama. Pratik Abhishek Samastyoga, ras kya. So, Bhagwan wo 
वीरिय रस वो लड़ने का रस चखना चाहते हैं कि भाई कैसा ये रस है एक रस है ना युद्ध का भी एक सेना का व्यक्ति होता है उसको वो रस कितना आनंदित करता है भाई हाँ भाई मजा आया लड़के इत्यादि तो बीच में पितामा वो रस वो सुख वो आनंद देना चाहते हैं कृष्ण को बानों से मार के किस तरह से ऐसे करके वैसे करके रोमांच और बढ़ाना चाहते हैं ना भगवान तो रसो शेखर है रसो शेखर कृष्ण का एक नाम है रसो शेखर मीन्स इज ऑलवेज दॉप मोस्ट रसाज और ऑलवेज एक्सपांडिंग इन इज रसाज इन इज एंजॉयमेंट तो भीष्म पितामा वॉन्ट्स टू गिव कृष्णा दैट हाइस्ट एंजॉयमेंट थ्रू दिस फाइटिंग सर्विस सो विद दैट मूड ही ब्लू हिज कॉन्शल सो लाउडली बट वट डज इट से हिज कॉन्शल वॉज टमल्टस दिस इज वॉट संजय इज सेंग टमल्टस मीनिंग मेकिंग अ ग्रेट साउंड बट वेन इट कम्स टू टेक्स्ट फोर्टीन वेन कृष्णा एंड अर्जुना ब्लू देर कॉन्शल ही इज कॉल सेंग वॉट द ट्रांसेंडेंटल साउंड the conscious blowing of krishna and arjuna's conscious gave a transcendental sound na to ye that transcendental sound divya dhvani sanket de rahi hai sanket de rahi hai arjun ke madhyam se hum sabhi ko ya arjun ko bhagwan sanket de rahe hain ki arjun jeet teri avashya hai jeet teri avashya wo ek dhvani se pata chal jata hai na ek sanket mil jata hai तो वैसा उसी तरह से भागवत गीता का अब शुरुआत हो रहा है हम भी इसको पढ़े ना आगे बढ़ते चलेंगे तो हमें संकेत मिलेंगे भगवान संकेत दे रहे डायरेक्ट कि मेरे लल्लू लाल देखो तुम लोग यहाँ इकट्ठे हुए हो पढ़ो पढ़ो मेरे दिव्य वचन को और ये संकेत देता हूँ मैं ध्वनि बजा दी मैंने कि देखो चीत अवश्य तुम्हारी होगी इस संसार के प्रपंच से छूटोगे तुम और असली दिव्य सुख आनंद का अनुभव करो उसके रस को चखो जो जिससे अभी तक वंचित रख रहे हो अपने आप को सो कृष्णा ब्लोइंग कॉन्शल इज द ट्रांसेंडेंटल कॉन्शल एंड हिज गिविंग एन इंडिकेशन टू अर्जुना और टू एवरी वन अर्स एज वेल दैट नीड नॉट वरी विक्ट्री इज ऑन योर साइड विक्ट्री इज ऑन योर साइड दैट इज वट ट्रांसेंडेंस means like ever evolving in joy full of knowledge and a life of eternity now harsha go into the purport again of 14 beautiful purport na jayastu pandu putra nam yesham pakshe janardana jay means glories all glories to pandavas why because krishna is on their side yesham pakshe janardana krishna is on their side now again a question which i think we touched a bit in the beginning and i have asked a few times i like this question tell me one person on whose side is god not on whose side is there any person any living entity on whose side god is not present krishna is not present say no see no, god no, krishna but... Yeah, Krishna is God is present on everyone's side, you know. Krishna is everyone's caretaker, maintainer, well-wisher, friend, helping everyone grow, purify in life, come out of their karmas, come out of their desires, evolve, you know, facilitating or frustrating people through their desires. Why frustrating? Because our desires are negative desires or material-oriented desires. they don't have any set tinge of spirituality so facilitating our desire so that we get frustrated and we can take shelter of krishna so sansar mein abhishek uh, guessing you are still there with us yes sir okay thank you sansar mein koi ek jana bhi hum dhoond ke la sakte hain kya jo बोले हैं या जिसको हम देख सकें कि भगवान इसके साथ नहीं है कृष्णा सर्व सामर्थ है कृष्णा इज ऑल केपेबल ओनली कृष्णा ओनली कृष्णा है बिकॉज ही इज द ओरिजिन ऑफ ऑल ऑफ आवर एवरी वन ना सो ओनली कृष्णा कैन रेसिप्रोकेट विथ ईच वन ऑफ अस यूनिकली एट द सेम टाइम एंड वॉट टू स्पीक ऑफ ईच वन ऑफ अस एज इन एट बिलियन ह्यूमन पॉपुलेशन through the entire this material creation 
not just this material planet, earthly planet, and including plants, trees, uh, your um, fish, water animals, and all humans. No, the earthly living entities, the heavenly, the lower planetary living entities, this universe, beyond this universe, other material universes, only Krishna can easily reciprocate and is easily reciprocating with each and every living entity at a personal level. Krishna expands himself as super soul and enters each and every iota of atom, enters our heart and is residing with us, helping us, guiding us, inspiring us. Paramatma. Paramatma, na? Paramatma Swarup se. Throughout, we will find the kindness, love, care of Krishna only. So, this is the question. If we can say, no, there is not a single person on whose side God is not. Now, tell me, how many persons are there who are on God's side? Who can claim and say, yes, I am on God's side. I am on Krishna's side. How many are there? Yes, Ellen, you were saying something. Pandavas. Yeah, Pandavas are there, surely. Pandavas are there. In our real life example, do we know someone? In our current, present, say, state, present, current existence. Pandavas are surely on Krishna's side. Yeah? Others, Brajvasis, Gopis, they are on Krishna's side. These are the associates of Krishna. And now we have to check ourselves. Are we on Krishna's side? God is certainly on our side. Krishna is certainly on our side. But actually, are we on Krishna's side? And if we, and this is what life is. To where, whichever side we are, we have to turn ourselves. Take a U-turn. You know, we have come a wrong way. And a long way perhaps. But okay, that's fine. Protect your present moment. Take a U-turn. And take ourselves to Krishna. Then we will find all resolve in life. Then all glories will be there. So, just like Arjuna said, Krishna, kindly come on my side. I accept you. I choose you. I would like you to be on my side. I would like you to drive my chariot. That will give me peace. Likewise, we have to call Krishna to come on our side, our lives. Engage, involve Krishna more and more in our life. Then we understand what it means to be on Krishna's side. Arjuna gave Krishna to be his chariot, you know, to lead my chariot. Likewise, we should be giving our body, mind, our senses, our intelligence. Krishna, kindly drive my life. Kindly drive my life. And then it is going to be a fascinating ride. Okay, any question or comment? Any clarification, addition, anyone like to say anything? No, sir. So, Harsha, then go to Anuvad. Maybe if you can tolerate me for a short while more, if it suits you. Um, I would like to read till 21-22 and just translations only. Huh? So, okay. माता अनुराधा जी पढ़िए पंद्रह हमने पढ़ा क्या पंद्रह से पढ़ना है ना शायद सो सेम सीक्वेंस सेम ऑर्डर अगर अनुराधा माता जी जगे हुए हो अभी भी तो पढ़िए पंद्रह से जगे हुए तो हो लॉर्ड कृष्णा ब्लू हिज कॉन्शियस कॉल्ड पांच जन्या अर्जुना ब्लू हिज द देव दत्त एंड भीमा द वोरेशियस eater and performer of Herculean task, blew his terrific conch shell called Pounder. King Yudhishthir, the son of Kunti, blew his conch shell, the Ananta Vijaya, and Nakul and Sehdev blew the Sughosa and Mani Puspaka. The great archer 
the king of kasi the great fighter shikhandi rishtadum virata the unconquerable satyaki drupad the sons of draupadi and others o king such as the mighty armed son of subhadra all blew their respective conscience and then please read sorry the blowing of these different conchels became uproarious vibrating both in the sky and on the earth it shattered the hearts of the sons of dhritarashtra at that time arjuna the son of pandu seated in the chariot bearing the flag marked with hanuman took up his bow and prepared to shoot his arrow o king after looking at the son of dashtra drawn in military array arjuna then spoke to lord krishna these words arjuna said o infallible one please draw my chariot between the two armies so that i may see those present here who desire to fight and with whom i must contend in this great trial of arms what does infallible mean ev uh perfect um that can't do wrong yeah perfect one who cannot do wrong one who is free from mistakes cannot commit any mistakes who is error free one who uh doesn't fall down from his status nice okay uh theek hai continue reading diksha padhiye let me see those who have come here to fight wishing to please the evil minded son of the dhritarashtra i wish i agreed 24 number or descendants of bharat have been thus been addressed by arjun lord krishna drew up uh, drew up the fine chariot in the midst of the armies of both parties hmm. so i think we'll read till 24 only here huh? and now we are nicely entering into bhagavad gita will open up now from 21 22 onwards it opens up amazingly hmm? so some things now see both the parties are assembled uh, both the parties have blown their conch shells you uh, know uh, um, and uh, they have they are ready for war and now arjuna is uh, telling in 20 uh, that um, uh, he he see uh, he was prepared to Uh, he took up his bow and prepared to shoot his arrows and looking at the far field he um, spoke to krishna these words what that uh, oh infallible one please draw my chariot between the two armies so that i may see the those present here who desire to fight and with whom i must contend in this great trial of arms so now here the bhagavad gita will open up and open up fascinatingly fascinatingly you know some things in life uh, they suck suck us in hai na jaise something in life uh, water or something just goes sucks in likewise from now on we should get we will get drawn into the philosophy into the wisdom into the teachings of bhagavad gita from this verse onwards we'll discuss more tomorrow on this but for now anyone who is following russia ukraine war or not following but knows little bit about russia ukraine war or i'm hoping everyone in this group know that there is a war yes. going on between russia and ukraine so uh now we all know there is war going on between russia and ukraine right and all but look just few points i like to share and we'll share further more as well but look how this russia ukraine war and how this war in bhagavad gita are completely different completely different in the sense 
they blow their conscience and then they are declaring okay we are ready to fight you know it's not like an unannounced war altogether also from the very first text we understand kya dharm kshetra kuru kshetra ki bhai kuru kshetra mein ja ke ikhatte hue aur wahan pe ja ke ab lad rahe hain ha bhagavad gita mein mahabharat mein kabhi humne suna kya kahin pe iska varnan nahi hai kya ki itni striyan mari बताओ कितनी माताएं कितनी स्त्रियां मरी इस युद्ध में कैन एनी वन नो एंड से हाउ मेनी वुमेन डाइड इन दिस वॉर हाउ मेनी चिल्ड्रेन डाइड इन दिस वॉर कितने बुजुर्ग लोग मरे नो जीरो है ना कितने हाउ मेनी स्कूल्स गॉट बर्न्ड इन दिस वॉर बॉम्ड इन दिस वॉर एंड आई एम नॉट ट्राइंग टू से दैट रशिया इज ऑन द रॉन्ग साइड या यूक्रेन इज नॉट ऑन द रॉन्ग साइड नो they both are pretty much on the wrong side only I'm not trying to take anyone's favor or side or anything ana uh, and there are some things anyways we can leave that for another discussion with russia ukraine whatever but uh, do we see any schools or yeah. place of worship or anything bomb bombarded hmm? in under this this is vedic war so is anything vedic it is done in a vedic manner hai na vedic manner in line with scriptures what the scriptures say so the war starts with conchal blowing the war starts when the sun is risen at a good morning time when they have done all their morning spiritual purification activities then they go into war hmm uth ke naha do ke puja paath karke phir yudh shuru hota hai ha aur युद्ध कब तक चलता है सूर्यास्त एक बार सूर्यास्त हो गया फिर कोई फाइटिंग नहीं है सो द यू द वार स्टार्ट्स फ्रॉम मॉर्निंग वंस दे ऑल हैव टेकन बाथ और से एंड दे हैव डन देयर स्पिरिचुअल पूजा रिचुअलिस्टिक एक्टिविटीज देयर वर्शिप देन दे गोइंग टू दिस वार एंड दे वार अंटिल सनसेट आफ्टर सनसेट नो मोर फाइटिंग नो मोर फाइटिंग but in russia ukraine war or leave russia ukraine war india pakistan war india china war afghanistan war iraq iran so many such wars is there any time factor taken into consideration oh it's evening time now no more fighting rather each country is trying to put so much money acha another question tell me every country has a budget right financial budget every year they release and all how much fund which is the um, sector the section uh, where the bulk of the funding goes defense defense ha na ev uh, ln isn't it even in scotland budget oh, sorry i'm saying scotland budget even in uk budget uk how yeah. how much money british government spends on defense crazy crazy amount of money buying weapons from where saudi arabia you know ev um, scotland scottish university some students filed a petition or some alleged alleged that the scottish university is taking our students tuition fee money and all they have good spare money and what they did with this money they are buying arms or they have given this money to the government to help them to buy arms from saudi arabia and middle east countries how much um, britain invest in this defense and if you look into the technology of war oh it's crazy the way things are shaping israel one of the biggest uh, uh, it's yeah it's a very rich country may not be the top most rich country but top 5 top 10 certainly israel hai na area wise geography wise population wise no big no big not at all big like hai na it doesn't count itself comes in very big area geography or population wise but if you look one of the again <laughs> i have told the answer now but if you disagree or if you have any other thoughts then please add in my little understanding israel is one country which is very militarily advanced tremendous defense system certainly america is there china is also there 
Russia is also very super advanced. But Israel, one minute, huh? So, कितना पैसा खर्च करती है इसराइल बताओ कितना पैसा इन डिफेंस कैसा मिलिट्री सिस्टम है जबरदस्त एनी कंट्री इवन इंडिया इज वेल वॉट एवर बजट मेजर पोर्शन इज वेल डिफेंस हाउ मच मनी डू यू थिंक इज स्पेंड ऑन एग्रीकल्चर एनी कंट्री हाउ मच डज इज स्पेंड ऑन एग्रीकल्चर Hmm? How much money does a country spend on uh, education? How much does it spend on healthcare? On social sector? Look, when it comes like a uh, universal credit and things, huh? In India also there is there, but it is no one knows about it. But surely there would be space for it in the government. In Europe, in America, there's this universal credit somewhere else, something called benefit, some sort of and all. Uh, how much money goes in defense? How much money goes in party? How much money goes in this lobbying and so much? But when someone could be genuinely in need or whatever circumstances oriented, when they ask for uh, some benefit money, some help grants and all from government, government becomes so much into red tape and so much of trouble for them. Evie, you were saying something? Yeah, I was just saying that um, they tend to spend uh, more than all of it combined on defense than what they spend on every, everything else. Wow. The more they spend in defense combined of rest of the things, huh? Mm, pretty much. Okay. And irony, who are we trying to defend ourselves? From France? From who are we? France doesn't want to go in war. England also doesn't want to go in war. Each country, if you ask, why are you building so much? Well, to protect ourselves, defend ourselves. Okay, will you attack someone? No, we don't want to attack anyone. Will France will actually we want to attack uh, England? No. <laughs> but it is because of, see, defense is a very, not at all a good mentality. No. What is this defense doing? Now, with Russia, Ukraine, every country is trying to step up. Na? England wants to have a very sophisticated defense system. It has as well, uh, relatively speaking. Each country wants to have a sophisticated defense system. We are defending ourselves, defending ourselves. And in Krishna consciousness, defending is not a good attitude or quality to have. Defense is another form of sense gratification. Na? Defense is what? Trying to showcase that I am right. You know, one of the biggest problems we carry is to defend ourselves, to prove or to show that actually I am right. I am right. I am right. It's not a good idea, a good healthy quality. That doesn't mean that we just become irresponsible and do whatever we want and all. No. Or that doesn't mean we do not consider what is right, what is wrong and do not shape our life or make turns or changes in our lifestyle. But one who is genuinely, naturally situated in righteousness, he wouldn't want to defend himself. We never hear Jesus Christ defending himself. We never hear others defending themselves. Huh? Prabhupada never defended himself. Vaishnavas do not defend themselves like this. So, see, this war, again coming to this war, the rule was in the evening time, no more fighting. But Russia, Ukraine or any war, if we pick up in history, what happens? By night time, there are these night bombs or what not. Na? You can still see and throw and all. Huh? Then, in this war, it was a one-to-one. -one. one person will be fighting with another person. No one, he won't be engaging another two persons will not be fighting with one person. No. One chariot fighter, another chariot fighter. One foot soldier, another foot soldier. It's not a chariot fighter fighting, fighting with a foot soldier. No. 
That's not the rule. One foot soldier fighting another foot soldier. One chariot fighter, another chariot fighter. One horse soldier fighting another horse soldier. That sort of way. But having said that, yeah, when war begins, obviously there is chaos. So there will be drifts and all. But by and large, that rule is there. And here we don't see, Baba. Here there is no rules counts as such. The most interesting thing. Uh, these are small, small things only. These are small, small things only. No woman got died in this war, Kurukshetra war. No children got died. They selected a spot far away from city or somewhere. Anna? They selected a big plot of land, a city altogether, where they want to fight. Unlike this Russia-Ukraine war. Hmm? Another, the biggest thing. Take a screen, chai hata bhi sakte ho bhai. Bhot paka di aap loko screen se ab aise hi suno aur pakaunga thodi der. Another biggest thing from this, um, uh, in this war, in Mahabharat, in Bhagavad Gita, what we reading. Who are at the forefront when the two armies are there? Who is at the front most? Pratik, aap batao, Abhishek, Evi. Who all are at the forefront? Sorry? So, in this war, we see the two armies are arranged, hmm, facing each other. And oh, yeah. who are at the forefront? Who is at the front in the arrangement? The leaders. The leaders. Hmm? The commander-in-chief, all the leaders, both the sides, they are facing each other. And the subordinates, the foot soldiers, elephant soldiers, horse soldiers, others and all, they are behind. In Russia and Ukraine war, who is in the ground? Who is on the ground? Who is giving lives? Huh? The people. Where are the leaders? The ones, the ones who follow them. And where are the leaders? No, nowhere. <laughs> They're hiding. Nice people guys are busy fighting. Leaders, can I tell? Leaders sit in their bunkers. Ke andar. Leaders would be sitting in their bulletproof rooms. Hai nahi? In their bunkers, well protected. Sure. Here and there. And you know how, how society corrupts us actually. See, this corruption is within all of us, our minds only. How? Uh, this is Duryodhan mentality. What? He did not choose Krishna. He chose temptation, willingly, Maya. And now his diplomacy, duplicity, tricks, all this coming. So what do leaders, they call themselves? They will call themselves, we are strategic planners. We are not operational people. Those who are foot soldiers, those who are fighting and all, they are operational people. We are, so operation, they are field people. He's a field soldier. And I am a strategic planner. Na? So a strategic planner sits behind the desk, opens his laptop, gives instructions, sees the set nav and all the maps and calls and tells them next, this is the move, that is the move. We are formulating strategy. Na? Divide. Kar diya se. Kya? Strategic people. And what? Operations people. These are the logistics, the management people and all. And what do government say? My son, go and fight. My child, the country is resting on you. Our wives, children are resting on you. We will sing your laurels. Every Thursday, 8 p.m., we will go out and dhol bajayenge, na? Bahar ja ke. Na? Go and fight, my son. You need medical facility? Let us know. We will provide you all medical facility. You need guns, ammunition? We will provide you. You need jackets? We will provide you. Don't worry about your wife, children, parents. No, they will get education. We will go give you homes. Uh, we will give you lifelong pension and all. And my dear son, you go and give up your life. Why? Because of this political rift. leaders Where are the leaders here? Right at the front, front. Protecting the foot soldiers, others. Subordinates, everyone protecting them, the leaders are there on both sides, on both sides. Such is the irony where we live.
Why? Because leaders are all corrupt, all greedy. Different degrees though, but still. Why? Because we have deviated from the message of Bhagavad Gita or scriptures. You know, from our spiritual roots, our spiritual existence. Such an irony tragedy if the leader is corrupt like this. If the leader is sitting in a Russian leaders. Huh? Where do the children go to schooling? Which school do they go? Where do they go? Either topmost schools in Russia or somewhere abroad. Abroad. Europe or America, wherever. Ukrainian leaders. What do you think? These army leaders, where Political leaders, where Most of the Russian, Ukrainian leaders, they would have fled also. Huh? These leaders, do you not think these leaders, Russian, Ukrainian leaders, they would have done arrangement for their wives, children and all to leave the country easily, private plane or what not? Huh? Easily get settled in Europe or wherever. So we have to see where to put our faith, where to take shelter. So much money is spent in defense. Do we really need this much money to be spent in defense? An irony, agriculture, everywhere discarded. Everywhere. Khane ke liye, kya chahiye? Roti sabji dal chawal chahiye ya goli chahiye? Do we eat ammunition bullets or do we eat uh, sabji? Kya chahiye? Batao. Kitna desh hai jo is war se yud se paisa banata na? Kaise? Banduk bana ke, ye bullets bana ke, bech ke, war ka uniform aur bhi kitna kuch logistics na? Pani bech ke, aisa packaging ye, wo sab kuch. और सब लगे लग जाते हैं हाथ धोने ना बेती गंगा में हाथ धोने के लिए सो पॉइंट इज इट्स अ ह्यूज कंट्रास्ट बिटवीन दिस वार एंड दैट वार कैन नॉट बी कंपेयर्ड कैन नॉट बी कंपेयर्ड एज सच दिस इज व्हाई इट इज अ वैदिक वार एंड दिस कृष्ण द भागवत गीता महाभारत इज अ जेन्युइन प्रॉपर रिलीजियस वार टू ब्रिंग अबाउट द प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ रिलीजन इन सोसाइटी इट्स नॉट अ फैनेटिक वार it's not a fanatic war and it's not a fanatic religious practice as well. Okay, I think this is enough of hammering for today. Otherwise, you all may not come tomorrow. Na? Kal ke liye bhi thoda bacha ke rakhna, na? So, Ellen, Pratik, EV, Diksha, Arsha, Bishek, any question, comment? Speak out more, something from this Russia, Ukraine, or in general, uh, societal workings or dealings, or something you want to share from Bhagavad Gita. Okay, I'll stop the recording. Okay,